I fell into the job at the Navarra Press completely backwards and without any experience whatsoever other than a love of writing and a love of news and, and politics in particular. What's appealing about it to me is um, I'm generally a nosy person. I want to ask questions. I want to know why things happen. But I've always felt really strongly about the, the role of newspapers and the role of media in the lives of citizens. Um, I've read the newspaper ever since I was old enough to read, really. We well, my latest investigation has been into two coaches at the local high school who have resigned under suspicious circumstances. And we had heard in a roundabout way that he had resigned because he was accused of doing some inappropriate things with students. Well, I started digging because that's just something that appeals to me is I have a really innate sense of right and wrong and I expect other people to play by that sense of right and wrong, which frequently leads me to being disappointed in people. Uh, but the good thing is that I can expose it when they're not. So I worked really, really hard to get in contact with a couple of the alleged victims, um, get them to talk to me directly, corroborated their statements with other people, talked to the school um, principal, the vi vice principal, I talked with the school board, and we ran into a lot of, of blowback from them, and that usually tells me that I'm on the right track. When people start bristling about giving information that they know that they're by law obligated to give me, I start getting more curious. So I requested all of the two coaches' personnel files, which are open to the public based on the fact that they're county employees who are paid with taxpayer funds. The county initially said that they were not able to provide those to me because they had gone to the Florida Department of Education, who was conducting their own investigation. I worked with Barbara Peterson at the First Amendment Foundation, who was great about giving me actual legal citations that I could use to demand the documentation. I spoke with the Assistant Attorney General for Florida, who works with the uh, Special Counsel for Open Government, who gave me some AGOs, which are like Attorney General opinions on certain laws that actually forced the school district to cough up the documents that they should have given me in the first place. I've learned that Florida has some of the most broadly worded public records acts in the nation and some of the most uninformed citizens about those records acts including people that you would think would be informed about those records acts, whose job it is to understand the law and to apply it fully. I think if we hadn't been so so much the, the champion of those rights, the rights of the First Amendment, the rights of the citizens to know what's going on with their taxpayer money, the rights of the victims to be able to substantiate their claims, and frankly the rights of the accused. If it had we buckled under the first side of pressure, it would have never gone to print anywhere. And I think they feel like they can't make a difference, particularly because we're inundated with national politics so often. And it's really hard to get a change through Washington when you're not a senator or a lobbyist or a congressman of some sort, and you feel disconnected from that process. And there's that old saying that all politics are local, and I really believe that. If you get involved locally with the politics that are going on in your hometown or your home county, you can make a difference. It might not seem huge because it's not a national scale difference, but there's 38 some odd thousand people in our community. If we can make a difference for those citizens, that's worth it. It's worth the blood, sweat, and tears. It's worth the wrangling. It's worth the dirty looks. It's worth getting booed at a parade for Mardi Gras.